All right, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to caution about some statements being made with dubious conclusions being drawn due to illiterate reading of statistical data regarding the pandemic. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So data, math, statistics, all very good. And I'll say it, said it before and I will say it again. The problem when you are presenting data to people or, or trying to infer conclusions is, and I've never understood this, the vast majority of people do not have the mathematical education to be able to do it. That's fine. And do you know what? The majority of people recognize that they're bad at maths. I do not understand this. The vast majority of people, you say maths to them, oh, they're not very good at maths. And yet they all think they can read statistical data. No. Anyway. With this, you know, the uh, the point at which the UK lockdown measures had been in place for a week. So obviously when you're watching these, it tends to be a day or so after I'm actually doing them. So when the measures had been in place in the UK for a week, the chief scientific advisor was proudly proclaiming that the measures have been a success. They're working because there had been a reduction in the number of deaths. Now, this is not a pop at Sir Patrick Valance himself, as I'm sure he would never say anything like this unless he were being fed his line by the monkeys in government. And actually, to be fair, I don't want to have too much of a pop of a government on this one. It's a political statement. It's not a scientific statement. What it may well be is they're just trying to say to people, look, the measures are working. Keep on with them. Okay, it's a white lie. You could call that a white lie. Compared to the, some of the lies that the government are coming out with, I'll go with this one. But it is a lie. Um, it, it's It's... It's a scientifically illiterate statement for two reasons. First of all, so we're talking about them going, oh yeah, the measures are working after seven days. But the global data suggests that people are infectious for an average of about 12 days. So that means it's impossible to judge any measures after just seven days. As an aside, it's also why the UK's position of saying isolate with symptoms for seven days is also foolish. You know, I was appalled when I heard that Prince Charles had stopped isolating after seven days. The World Health Organization say 14 days. Remember what they're saying, the average period of infection, you know, the, when you're infectious for is 12 days. That's an average, it could be more, could be less, but it could be more. 14 days is what they're saying. And that's what most countries are going with because it's correct. Secondly, this proclamation that the measures are working, was based on a slight dip in the number of deaths occurring in the UK on one particular day. On the seventh day, the number dipped. Ah, hurrah, we've turned the tide. You never play base a conclusion on a single data point. And as if the gods of science and maths combined wish to show Sir Patrick Valance and Boris Johnson the effect of that, the very next day, the very next day, at the point I'm doing this, the most recent data showed a significant increase. You don't base it on one data point. Never ever base a conclusion on a single point of data. You need to observe an overall trend and actually to have any sort of confidence, you need as many data points as possible. We don't have that many. So you want to get ideally as much data as you can get. This is why our lack of testing means that the data is largely useless for determining anything about how well measures are doing in this country. Even the data on the number of deaths, which is the only thing you can go with in the UK, is suspect because apparently if someone dies of the illness at home, not having been tested, they won't count on the figures. Of course, how can they? If you can't be certain it was due to that, how could you do so? Also, the government have been saying that deaths won't count until next of kin have given consent. Now, I don't know that anyone has been withholding that consent, but... You know, so it could hopefully just mean that data is delayed. You know, so when we get a number of deaths, some of it may have been deaths that happened a few days ago. Uh, but it is a bizarre rule to make up when it's not like there's any personal data involved. We're just adding one to the tally. So anyway, we need to look at trends. The Financial Times is plotting a regular update graph with the general trends for recorded deaths by country which is always worth a look. I will put a link to that in the description below. I'm not sure if that's behind a paywall or not. It's always a bit of a thing with newspapers, but it's there. Um, now on it, what you can see is that we are following the trend that Italy forged. 
uh, with France on the same lines. The US was keeping a bit of a lid on it, but the rate has massively increased of late. Um, Italy's rate is looking like it is leveling off. Hopefully it is. We don't know. And there is always the dreaded second wave. Um, but, you know, Italy looks like the first of, of the major countries to be hit to be leveling off despite imposing measures late. So there are other countries that have leveled off as well, but they imposed measures much earlier. Germany is following China's path. Remember, China did lock down early. Uh, Germany have also taken recommended measures from the health, World Health Organization. So if you want to infer anything from these trends, and remember that, you know, only the number of deaths is of any use, not cases. We aren't testing, so we can't say anything about the number of cases other than that the real number is greater than the official number. You know, the government saying that as well, the real number is much greater. So at the point at which I'm recording this, the number of cases, the active cases, the number of people in the UK who are actually infected is somewhere between 20,000 and 66 million. So that's good to know. But if there's anything of interest to examine, it's looking at the trends for your country, the UK in my case, uh, against others and comparing to when measures were implemented. So the UK did actually impose lockdown measures before the same point on the curve that Italy did. So that's encouraging. We did do it, however, later than the same points that Spain and France did it, which is ominous because they are further ahead and the rate is still very high. You also have to remember when you're comparing, it's not a simple case of just comparing the lines on the graph either. Different countries have, you know, different qualities. For example, it was noted that in Italy, they have uh, a higher proportion of elderly people who'd be, of course, much more vulnerable. So a greater proportion of their population is vulnerable to this. That may account for the, the greater number of deaths. It may or may not. Because, um, of course, they live forever. The, the, the Mediterranean diet is like the healthiest diet on Earth. They live forever. Um, now, in Spain, one particular little thing with Spain is that Unlike some, say, Scandinavian countries, it's been noted, the average Spanish household has more occupants than, say, the average Scandinavian household. So, again, when you're trying to compare your country to, to another country, if you've got households with more people in it, of course, you increase the risk of passing infections on. So, that's something to bear in mind as well. There's so many other things to try and take into account, which is one of the difficulties with trying to make statistical comparisons. You know, even when you're showing a graph and that is showing trends and we should look at trends, there are lots of different features that all, you know, variables that impact it. You all remember, I hope from your science lessons, you would do if I were your teacher, that when you're conducting an experiment and you wish to try and, and highlight any links, you want two variables, the one you're going to change and the one you're going to measure, and everything else needs to be kept the same. They are control variables. Well, there's an awful lot of other variables that are not being controlled in this. Uh, so that makes things difficult as well. You also, from these trends, get some notion of what the government have been saying this week regarding the length of lockdown, be months rather than weeks. Yes, Boris Johnson was saying if we can, you know, crack on with this, we can beat this in, in 12 weeks. I mean, that itself is you know, uh, several months. And also he was saying that the measures will be in place for three weeks. Don't imagine that that means they might be eased after three weeks. I mean, one week's already gone. They won't. If anything, they'll be tightened. It's just a let's review it at that point. I think really, again, it's one of these things to try and get people on side. Focus people on three weeks. Can you do it for three weeks? Right. Then you get to the end of the three weeks. Right. We're going to do it for another three weeks and see from then. It might be tightened. And then it's like saying, right, we're going to tighten it a bit because some of you I haven't been doing it right. If we, if more people do it right in three weeks' time, then we may be able to ease some of them, not get rid of it altogether. The more people that will engage with the measures and actively seek ways to reduce the amount of contact with people, actually think about it, consciously think, is what I'm about to do going to increase my chance of passing an infection on? Or always assume you are infected, always. Think to yourself, let's assume I'm infected is what I'm about to do going to increase the chance of me passing it on? And if you're not, is what I'm about to do going to increase the chance of me receiving that infection? And, and the quicker this will be over if people actually do that. Um, but we're still talking about having these measures in until latish summer at least. Even then, I would think it would be a phased easing of restrictions. So I was saying to my girlfriend, she 
she works at home now. She's able to do her job at home. And actually, there is no reason why she, she doesn't want to. She would prefer to be in work. But she could do her job from home indefinitely. That sort of person, I imagine when there is the restrictions, the government will be saying to employers, look, if there are people who can do their job at home, it's entirely administrative or whatever, they can work on computers at home, keep them at home for now. Again, that would just make sense. Um, because the last thing you want is to let everyone run free again and then get another wave and back to where you started. So for this, we would also do well to follow the example of other countries in terms of how they came out of it. There are advantages on being behind the curve. It gives you a window into the future that only a fool would fail to follow. Sad to say that that window won't just allow us to see the countries who get the measures right, but also those who get it wrong. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, our American cousins, but I believe that the orange one is still talking about dropping the restrictions for Easter. So for the United States, well, the individual states, I suppose, that are adopting their own measures, no. Well, you may protect you from the orange one there. But the ones who do not will be sadly grimly instructive to the rest of the world as well. But there is some potentially good news for the UK and for some other countries as well. So in the UK, our rate of deaths was doubling every two days. Now it is roughly two and a half days. Still high, but it is an improvement. However, the data does not currently show any proof that this is down to the measures adopted. Like I say, the infectious period is too large for the amount of data we currently have. And also, we just have too few data points. It's like trying to judge the height of a skyscraper when you're stood with your nose pressed against it on the ground floor. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.